blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i'd like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Precious, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Every living thing, two of every sort shall you bring into the ark, male and female. Save them from the coming Armageddon. All the wild beasts shall be in your keeping. Two of every species from the beginning of time. When it's terrible, God is God. When it's terrifying, God is God. When you are down, God is God. When you are up, God is God. When you are weak, God is God. When you are strong, God is God. When you are low, God is God. Your condition can never change God. He's still almighty God. Having gone around the world 42 times, end to end, I now know God doesn't give people load. He carries their load from them. Somebody say big hallelujah.
Stand to your feet, please. Thank you for doing that. Father, we join our hearts together to ask for your divine intervention in the lives of your people. You told me to tell the church whom you cannot help, the world can help them. Whom you cannot heal, the world cannot better their lords. Whom you cannot bless, the world cannot bless. Whom you cannot lift, the world cannot lift. I stand here tonight to declare by the authority of your word that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Heaven and earth can pass away. His words will never pass away. Just as the singers sang tonight, we believe in your word, Lord, that heaven and earth can change, but Jesus is unchangeable. He's the unchanging changer, the repairer of the broken lives, the healer of the sick, the blesser of the poor, the lifter of the downtrodden, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is our God today. Amen. Speak, for thy servants hear it. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, Amen. 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 Before you sit down, I want to ask you again. Is the church becoming a religious ground for you or a place of solution? Answer me. Do you think God has answer? Do you believe that God has solution? Yes. Let me say this before you sit down. I know you are very anxious to sit down. <laughs> if God ceases to be God, you cease to live. I say this to you. Clean and clear. If we who are believers can no more lean on God for answer and trust Him, for remedying, or repairing, or healing, or changing our course in life. We have no right to be in the church. That's number one. Number two, the world cannot be saved through our testimonies if we are going to believe, be believers this year and be unbelievers next year. No one will be saved by your testimony of sudden salvation, sudden deliverance, sudden miracle, sudden healing, and later, all you testified to before leave you and you begin to practice unbelief in the church. Christians, Christian life is not a temporary life. It's a permanent life of victory night and day. It's unfortunate that the church never, never expect because they are in the church to encounter problem. That's why a book like that book, Faith for All Life's Term, is written to help you know if the desert is never short of sand and the ocean is not short of water, God is not short of grace. Give Jesus a hand before you sit down. If you and sit down. John chapter 2. John chapter 2. John chapter 2, beginning from verse 1. And the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called, 
and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto them, said unto him, they have no wine. Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother looked to the faces of those that sat together in wondering for lack of wine and said unto them, Whatsoever he said unto you, kindly do it. And there we are set there, six water pots of stone, after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two of all three fattens apiece. Jesus said unto them, The pot has always been yours. Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said unto them, Now, Look at what God has done. Draw out and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine. And knew not whence it was. But the servants which drew the water knew. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom. And said unto him. Every man at the beginning doeth set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. Verse 11. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee. And manifested forth his glory. And his disciples believed on him. May the Lord bless his words. Amen. Amen. I want to speak on what I have entitled divine intervention. Say that with me. Divine Say it in English. Divine Say it as a Christian. Divine Say it as if you know what you are talking about. Divine, divine intervention. intervention. Do you believe in that? Yes. Fine. That's what I want to pick out of this place. I was talking to our student pastors in a joint section of our Bible college students last week. Almost 800 of them gathered together. Almost 800 from all fields of life. And I looked at the people that have been in government for 35 years left government to come to Bible college police permanent secretaries good secretaries of government heads of department educational leaders left their profession to come to be trained in our institute as I looked at these great men that when I was a young preacher some of them when I go to their offices I wait for us to try to see them in their on their seat now students in our bible college the tears of joy flowed out of my eyes i'm so glad you didn't do me bad when i met you 17 18 years ago you advised me on what to do and now the building you gave me counsel about is now where you are a student and he looked at me and said, that's why I'm here. Everything you have ever believed you want to in the name of the Lord, you succeeded to do it because you believe with God all things are possible. And I began to cry in that service. Nothing hit me, nothing beat me, but I just knew. I, I was thinking if that man did me bad, 19 years ago, I have the opportunity now to revenge <laughs> I could give him cutlass to cut grass. He wouldn't say no, even though he's 68. Whatever I thought I would do, if you, if you stop thinking good, you start to think bad. I began to say, look at what this man did. He was not a believer. He was not a Christian that time. He was a nominal churchgoer. But look at how much 
grace has done him favor. Not only born again with grandchildren, but coming to a Bible college known all over the country as a big government official for years. And now in the Bible school, I began to say, good, good, doing good is good. Doing good is good. Say that with me. Doing good is good. Uh, and I said this to one preacher today. If you, because of one evil, start to do bad, you find that all the good you've done before were never good. So doing good is good. Say it again. Doing good is good. Sometimes you are challenged. I, as a man who deal with millions of people every week by television, thousands upon thousands every day by church service, and thousands upon thousands of people through church services every week and mixing with thousands of pe preachers and pastors every day of my life no day that i live i do not meet with preachers every day whether i'm at home or abroad whether i'm flying or traveling i meet preachers everywhere in the world and almost every nation we go in 124 countries I see those who have seen me before. I can't hide. Therefore, the only option I have is to try to do good every time. Because only the bad you do, people will remember. If you do it once. If you have done 10 million good, the day you do one bad, that's the one they will remember you did. So I try my best as often, even if it's not convenient for me. If, it's, if I'm down, weak, and somebody needs help. I wouldn't say, do you see how I feel? I'm down. No. I try to lift the person. The Bible says, while you are lifting others, you are lifting yourself. While you are helping the weak, you are helping yourself. Here in this story of John chapter 2, my life has borrowed from the life of Christ. Several characteristics that, are, that is helping me in handling, handling a world ministry. It's hard to be a leader. It's tough to be a leader. But the challenge of leadership is being able to subdue yourself when you are down. To say, it's true, I'm almost down. Devil, you knock me down, I'm not going to accept a knockout. I'm going to stand and fight and win. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Never a day so ugly that you can add beauty to it. Never you find yourself in a day you are so down that you are not able to lift somebody. Never you find a day you are so sick that you can't pray for the sick. The sickler you are, the more sick you should look for to pray. Because when you lay hand on them to pray, you can take the faith of the sick to be well for yourself to be well. Can anybody say amen to that? Amen. When you are poor, and a poor man comes and says, I know you have money, give me money. Please, brother, borrow and give to the poor. Because if they ask you to help them when you are down, it means God has confidence in you that you are not as down as you think you are down. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. That's the life I live every day. When I wake up, the first people I see after morning prayer are people who have need. No matter how weak I am, I try to be strong. Because people are looking up to me every day. They don't care whether I slept at 4 o'clock and woke up at 5. They want strength from me. I can't say, do you know the time I went to bed? I'm tired, let me rest. No, I can't. It's, it's, it's a life. Jesus said, unless a man deny himself, carry the cross daily. It can't be my disciple. Christianity is not a life of excuse. It's a life of uses. It's not a life of excuses. Excuse me, I'm down. No. Excuse me, I'm tired. No. Excuse me, I'm poor. No. You can't take excuse. God will teach you to turn all your excuses to uses. Somebody say loud, Amen. amen. Please respond to me. I'm not a Baptist. Talk to me. <laughs> turn your life to tune to your life every energy god has given you 
is to be of service to mankind while you have life in you. Choir. Amen. Good. You still, you still have a little amen. Choir. Amen. Choir. Amen. Musicians. Amen. <laughs> All right. Let's look at this scripture very, very divinely because I want to speak on divine intervention. Verse 1 says here, The third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. The mother of Jesus was there. Let's look at the life of the mother of Jesus. Here is a woman that had unexpected visitor to her home, probably between the age of 18 and 22. This man came, his name is Angel Gabriel. He said, the power of the Most High have come to rest on you. And that which is within you is from above. Mary didn't know what to say. In conclusion, she said, Be it unto me as the Lord has wished. She didn't know how to respond. She never knew known a man before. Here she is told by the angel who never lie, You are pregnant. That which you are going to give birth to shall be a holy one. For the Spirit of the Lord God has rested upon you. First she was afraid to tell Joseph. Afraid to tell any of her relations. That's why the Bible said that Mary pondered these things in her heart. She didn't know who to tell. She's never known a man yet pregnant. Who will you tell? Finally, Joseph knew. And the Bible said Joseph decided to privately send her away. But the angel came to her, to him, and said, don't touch her. She and God have contract. The person that is in the womb will be called Emmanuel. God with us. So Mary knew whom Christ is before he was born. So when she was invited to this marriage, she also gave the son invitation. The Bible said, and both Jesus was called and the disciples to the marriage. Everything you want to do in life, that you put God ahead, when you put God first, when trouble come, God will appear at the scene. When you put God ahead of your crisis, God will become a cure when crisis show up. When you bring God ahead of your schedule, when you are about to scale over danger, the lifting power of the Most High shall raise you above the cloud. The man who was going to wed, I do not know as a theologian, but I know as a believer, the invitation must have come from the man who was about to marry. And when he invited Christ, his mother and the disciples, just as he invited all the guests, he never knew that the man who would turn water to wine was the one he invited. Everything you do as a Christian, particularly you saints in civilized nations, Christianity is not for convenience. It's for all weather. Christianity is for when it's rough. Christ is Christ. When it's dirty, Christ is Christ. When it's tough, Christ is Christ. When it's bad, God is God. When it's terrible, God is God. When it's terrifying, God is God. When you are down, God is God. When you are up, God is God. When you are weak, God is God. When you are strong, God is God. When you are low, God is God. Your condition can never change God. He is still almighty God. Amen. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. I read in Job 36, verse 4 and 5, Turn Job to me. They will hear your English. They are not hearing mine. But they are listening. I know that. Job 36, 
verse 4 and 5. You will see a scripture that will help you here. 36 verse 4 and 5. Read it loud, not as if you are singing. But line by line, brother. Very loud. Verse, Job 36 verse 4 and 5. Loud and line by line. For truly my words shall not be false. He that is perfect in knowledge is with thee. is with you. Amen. The one that is not crying when you are crying is with you. Amen. You know what I love about God? He knows when to send the messenger of peace to your stand. When everything about you is hot, you look this side hot, you look this side hot, you look back hot, you look front hot, and you know today is Friday and everybody is going to look up to you in the service. He knows how to send you a pastor. And say, be cool. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, be cool. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm talking? Yeah. When a pastor cries, the church dies. If a pastor is weeping, I used to, I used to face some situation in Africa as the church began to grow. You see, the good thing about God, somebody came the other day to my office and said, I, I, I was dreaming last night. He said, I was in the dream. He said, God told me I was going to face trial. I say, I say, brother, it's a lie. God never tells anyone when he's going to face trial. He shows you the throne. He never shows you the pit and prison. He knows that if he shows you the prison and the pit, you are going to run back. So all he shows you is the throne. That's God. God never shows any human being. Test. God will never show you you are standing in the court. And a lawyer throwing bullets to you. Never. God never show you in the dream of vision. Police arrest you and handcuff you. Never. He only show you when you are dancing and singing and rejoicing. Because in God, there is no tribulation. Did anybody hear what I'm saying? Yeah. So anytime you say, when I was sleeping last night, I saw people beating me. God never shows that to people. He only show you when you are lifting people up. Because he knows that if he shows you when you are beating you never follow his way. Same thing. When you are going to build a big church. He never shows you the crisis that is on the way. He shows you the good church. You see big large church. If you read my book. Fire his bone. I, I dreamed. I saw a mighty large tree. Lost leaves. No single leaf on it. Dried. From the root to the top. And the Lord says, stand here. I stood. As I stood under that mighty tree. With the scourging sun. An old lady of about 80 or 90 years was coming. With heavy load on her head. And the Lord said, rush to her. Help her bring the, the load under the tree. For her to rest from the sun. I looked up. The tree have no leaves. The sun was scorching. I ran to this lady, carried her load, 
on my shoulder and took her by hand and began to come under the tree. When we arrived under the tree, one leaf germinated on top of the tree. <coughs> when I dropped the load down, I looked out again. Two men were coming, heavy load on their head, old, and God said, run to them, help them carry it. I began to carry these people's load on my head from where I saw them under the tree. To bring them under the tree. Everyone that I brought under the tree, leaf began to germinate on top of the tree. Until I who was helping got so exhausted because of the loads I've carried from people. And the tree began to grow many leaves. And the Lord said, if you are tired of carrying the load from them alone, ask people to join you. So I said to all I've been helping, I said, help me reach out to the ones that are you can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of god preachers prophets teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the homepage and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. And still would lose on their head and thousands followed me and we went out began to help people bring their loads under the tree the tree now became a big tree with leaves green on top of it and thousands below and the lord said to me that is how your church will be if you follow my instruction you will not be the one to do the job alone i'll give you people from all over the world and everybody you help, we help to help others. Today, I can give thanks to God. Having gone around the world 42 times, end to end, I now know God doesn't give people load. He carries their load from them. Somebody say big hallelujah. hallelujah. His words are not false, and the mighty one is with thee. If nobody else believes, you should believe it. Amen. Next verse. Behold, God is mighty and despised. God is mighty. God is mighty. Say it again. God is mighty. Say it again. God is mighty. Now say this with the God I serve. The God I serve. The one that I serve. The one that I serve is mighty. Is mighty. Try it one more time. The God. The God that I serve. That I serve is mighty. Is mighty. The God. The God that I serve. That I serve is mighty. He's not weak. He's not tired. He's not down. He's strong every time. Their ears will not blow. So just give me some. The God you are nice self is mighty. When economy of the nation is down, 
God is mighty. When oil business run low, God is mighty. When gold plunge, God is mighty. When businesses ruin, God is mighty. When stock exchange go down, God is mighty. When the man in charge of stock exchange in England is removed, God is mighty. When Thatcher is no more there, God is mighty. When Reagan and Bush are gone, God is mighty. When you and I leave the scene, God will still be almighty God. Is anybody hearing me? Where you find yourself doesn't change God from whom he is. He's always strong and mighty. He's mighty and and despiseth not. And despiseth not any. Try it one more time. And despiseth not any. What does that mean in English? He doesn't despise anybody. Any lawyer here? Anybody who went to law school have any idea? <laughs> <laughs> they look at you small, but come. Anybody who has an English teacher? Who has ever taught? If you are 50 years old, come on, Peter. You ever taught school? <laughs> come on, come on, English. Come on, come on, lawyer. Come on. Tell me what this word means. Loud, not like. Uh, what, what it means yes tell us what it means it means that god doesn't matter how small you are it doesn't matter how infinitesimally small you are god will not despise you he'll Don't look after me. you i know that tell you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you told me i'll get it doesn't matter what you're convicted of it doesn't matter what you're convicted of it doesn't matter what you're it doesn't matter what your condition it does it doesn't matter what your condition you're listening there it okay. doesn't matter how small you are yes, you're hearing him it doesn't where you live. Start from here. Start from here. Start from here. It doesn't matter who you are. Okay. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter how you are. God will not despise you. You ran too fast. Oh. Oh, God. Okay. One. Well, two. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how you are. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what you are. It doesn't matter who. Um, why you are, God will not despise you. He is concerned about you. All right. Now, now, come on. Come. Now, tell us from legal point. This is not caught up. You are not defending anybody. But if the Bible says he does not despise any, what would that mean? Where's your wife? Let's uh, come and look at him. So. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do better than Peter did, but it means that he won't think of you as a worm. <laughs> in one word, in compound word, God will not look at you as a wimp or as a worm. He has value for you. That's what you mean. Can anybody say, God has value on me? God has put a price on me. Say it loud. God has put a price on me. I'm esteemed by God. I'm esteemed by God. I'm not demeaned. I'm not demeaned. That's what God is saying. He does not, whether you are a cripple, blind, deaf. I preached this message two days ago in, in Lagos, and a big bank chairman came to me and said, Sir, this is the biggest, this is the greatest message I've ever heard from anybody. That God despised not any. Say it with me. God despise not any. He said, tell me in simple word, what do you mean by this? And I said, I mean this. If God says because you are blind, you are a nobody, he has made a nobody. And God can never make a nobody. Are you hearing me? Yeah. The blind is made in the image of God. The lame is made in the image of God. The dumb and deaf is made in the image of God. So when God says, who are you? He's saying to himself, I made who are you? Are you hearing me? Yes. Look, look at the story in the Bible. It's found in Matthew. It's found, it's found in uh, Matthew 14. It's found in Luke 5. 
and Mark 5 is found in Luke, is found in John. The Bible said the woman with the issue of blood came from behind and said in her heart, If I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole from my plague. And Jesus, after the woman touched him, said, Who touched me? Peter said, There be many of us that push you and press upon thee. How do you say, Who touched me? Jesus said, Somebody touch me. Say that, everybody. Somebody touch me. God was making somebody out of a nobody. From a licking blood woman. God said she was a nobody when she came. But when she touched me, she became somebody. Can you say amen? amen. He despises not. Thank you, my beloved son. Now, how did you put it again? You are not a worm. <laughs> more, more, put it legal, legalistic. More, more legally, no matter who you are, he will represent you. So we have an advocate with God. Thank you, sir. Thank you. you you've won my appeal court. <laughs> now, no matter where you find yourself, God will represent you. Can anybody say amen to it? Amen. Here was Jesus sitting down, invited, not knowing God knows everything, but at least he wasn't aware that they needed him for a miracle. He wasn't aware that a whole new life to be started was going to start in jeopardy. This man marrying who invited Christ and disciples didn't know the man he invited was a miracle worker. He sat The priest was saying every good thing. He was listening. After the marriage ceremony they went now for the reception where glory and glamour was to be displayed. No sooner that they Wedding was over and ceremony was on. The mother of Jesus was approached. We are short of wine. He, she heard them panicking behind. No wine, no wine, no wine, no wine, no wine, no wine. She looked, she must have said to somebody, what did they say? And they said, they are short of wine. She rose up. I went to Christ. I said, son, I just found out they are short of wine. Can you do something? How did she find Christ to ask questions? He was invited. If you have never been inviting Christ to your marriage, do so today. If you have not invited him to your job, no matter how small that business is, coffee house business, Babi saloon business, Jerry Coy house business, roast and fry hair business, <laughs> biscuit and chip business, fish and chip business, chicken business, bookstore business, any type of job at all, including ministry, Invite him there. If he's ahead, whatever comes behind, he will handle it for you. I wish you had my English. If you bring him ahead, whatever comes behind, he can handle it. Did you hear me, young man? I know you to be in business. I visited your business place. I hope you are still there. Don't stay there too long. You move now. God bless you. That's why I would like to hear that. Continue moving. Even when you are shaking, keep on moving. Even when it's rough, keep on moving. No fish jumps out of this sea because of wave. <laughs> you never see a big shark say, the water is too it's pushing me so hard. I'm going to live on the land. No. The fish know that if you jump from the water to land, there are many fishermen without hook who will catch and eat. They will give 
thanks to God for your jumping from your crisis to where they are when they are looking for who will jump out. You never see a man on a race horse, a horse race, who went to win prize because the horse is galloping. Bah, bah, he said, my, this speed is too much and you are running too fast. Then jump out of the horse. He will die and the horse will go ahead. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Let's learn to turn our crisis to strengthen. I believe this message is blessing you. Please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com, the world database of Christian preachers, to help us reach 100 million people. The message continues after this video about Anointed Tube. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. to turn all our obstacles to miracle opportunity let's not become wimps every time we find ourselves in shaking situation we fall and begin to crawl and weep like babies let's not do that when your marriage shake you know sugar is coming out behind it when your business shake you know promotion is coming when your ministry shake you know god wants to lift you high nothing that is big I never started small and put it down peter the way to top is bottom write it down i'll give you my pen i have my birthday pen for you the way to the top is bottom somebody say that the way to the top is bottom. that's why why did god create ground so you can learn to get up why did he create the sky so you cannot limit your view why, was, why did he create the ocean? So you can learn to conquer events. You think you just come to church and sing those little choruses with little band, with little piano, with little organ, with little choir, uh, choir singing, then pronounce benediction. You come here struggling and live here crawling. That's not why the church is here. The church is here to train you that though the lion roars, it will never bite nor kill. The larger the trouble, the bigger the testimony. Somebody say hallelujah to that. Hallelujah. I teach people at home every day. No boxer, 
that sees the height of the opponent and surrenders can be a champion. Never. Bruno versus Lewis. Fine. <laughs> Muhammad Ali versus Listing. Fine. What's the name of the big man that was 44 years and fought two months ago? George Foreman. George Foreman versus whosoever. Smoking Joe Fraser. Anyone. 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 The bigger your opponent, the stronger you pretend to be strong. When a big man knows you are not afraid of him, he will be wondering. Look at David versus Goliath. Goliath 10 foot high. 6 feet wide. Four feet deep. <laughs> Stood. And say, rat. Where are you going with your little catapult? And the rat said, to make history. <laughs> say with me, to make history. To make history. If Goliath killed David, no news. But if David killed Goliath, he has news. Amen. If, if. Antelope killed tiger. News. If tiger killed antelope, no news. Do you believe what I'm saying to you tonight? Make history where there is none. Make news where there is none. Give life to where there is death. Give joy to where there is sorrow. Give power to where there is fainting. Make your voice heard all over the world. Done because the wall is falling, you join them to fall. The wall is looking for lifters and not co fallers. If in your effort to move forward, you find yourself on the ground, rise up, shake up the dust, start afresh. If God make you fall, He will make you rise. God never leaves anyone where He met them. Every time He saw the lame, Rise and walk. The blind I say unto the sea. The leper be cleansed. The dead be raised. Jesus has not changed. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. The marriage was going on. And suddenly the mother said. No wine. No wine. What do we do? Jesus said don't trouble me. This woman. This woman. Turned and said to them. I've told him, whatever happened from now, my son will do something. Whatsoever he says to you, do it. I wish every Christian would be able to bow their head in crisis time and say, God, hmm. Jesus stood up. He said, what do you have around? He said, six water pot. Fill it to the brim. Pastor Ruth, help your husband with this message when I finish. Take this tape and hear it again. The man who was wedding, the man who was marrying, didn't know the crisis at the back. He was so concentrated on the marriage that he didn't know the no why God blinded him from involvement of lack and the greatest grace is for you to have grace not to know what is happening wrong behind you is anybody hearing what I'm saying God overclouded his eye he was so concentrated on what the man within them was saying that when they were saying no wine he said I will <laughs> the life do you part I will no wine, I will. <laughs> for better, for worse, I will. In richer, for poorer, I will. He was concerned with I will. That he didn't bother, but I will not. And I have known that was at the back. Suddenly, 
good news burst out. Jesus said, feel it to the brim. Feel it to the brim. Feel the empty water pot to the brim. They feel it to the brim. I said, draw out. The impossible has taken place. Divine intervention has taken place. They drew out and took it straight to the governor of the feast. Ruth, it was not a minor wedding because governor was there. But the governor who was the master of ceremony, the governor of the feast, said, You gave us bad one to start. You are giving us sweet one to end. That's my prophecy for all of you here tonight. No matter how bad you start, you will end sweet. Stand to your feet. Join hand with somebody. May I make a little request for you? All of you come closer here. Make God your boss. Everybody come nearer. Come closer. Choir, come leave your seat. Move. Some those of you there move closer. I believe God sent me here for a purpose. I believe God brought me today back home here for a reason. I don't know what you are struggling with. And if it seems there's no way out. The master is already here. No losses to where there is profit. No defeat to where Jesus is present. No shame to where there is glory. No anguish to where there is anchor. No tears where there is cheers. No downcast when the lift is around. He said, dip the cup to the water you fill with to the brim. Test it. There's already a divine intervention. The man marrying didn't know. But after the miracle happened, the governor said, excuse me, you brought us here to start life with bitter wine. Why giving us sweet at the end? Before the man knew they were short of wine. God has already done it. I don't know what you have been battling with. I guarantee you God has done it. God has done it. God has done it. I told myself three days ago, the greatest privilege I have had, the greatest privilege, 35 years in the ministry, 55 years old in life, is the fact that I know before I met Christ, my life was full of crisis. Since I met Christ, He replaced my crisis with Christ. Christ is the bridge over troubled water. He is the God when He smote. He is the God when He's rough. He is God when He's tough. When you are in lion, then He comes to say to lion, today. You eat no more human being. Is anybody hearing me? When you are in the fire, I shed up Meshach and Abednego. That is the first time in history fire will burn no one when God is there. The Bible said the fourth man was there in their midst. In the lion then, the lion of the tribe of Judah was among the lions. And the other lion didn't know. So when they threw Daniel to the lions, he fell into his father's hand, who is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And you can't eat your child. You can only pet your child. Church is more than the song we sing from the uh, uh, song stand. Church is more than choir sing. Church is more than pastor preach. Church is more than we greet and hug one another. Church is, here am I, Lord. Help me. And when life turned against you, turn to God. Jesus will never say no when you say yes. Can somebody say hallelujah? hallelujah? I pray today that whatever be the crisis that confronted you before you came here, 
the man who have never lost any battle before is here to give you divine intervention. Bow your head and close your eyes. Eternal Father, you came to this marriage feast. The man that invited you knew not whom he invited. But when need came, you fought the battle behind him. You fought the war and won. And when the water turned to sweet wine, he who didn't know the battle that was going behind was told, why did you start us with bad wine? And ended with a sweet one. That's the God we serve. Not minding where we are coming from. But concerned about where we are. To take us to higher heights. Because you live. We can live also. I pray for everyone that came here with burden and load and tears and grief. Lord let no one go back with the same tears. Let every sickness and disease and pain and aches die here tonight. Because we've invited you here. And because you are here ahead. Whatever come behind you can handle on our behalf. I pray that every heaviness in our hearts disappear. That the grace of God will appear. That the name of the Lord will be magnified. Intervene Lord. Intervene. Intervene tonight. Show your glory and power. Demonstrate your grace. And lift your people from where they have found themselves. To where they can smile like this man and his wife did. When they were told sweet wine had come. Lift your hands up everybody. I pray that these hands will be strong and powerful. I pray that these hands will touch success and victory. I pray that these hands we touch miracles on her. That your hand will lower from heaven and touch your hands from beneath. Our hands touching your hands means miracle. Touch us, Lord. Give us joy to rejoice in the God of our salvation. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button 
on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preacher's pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idausa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idausa is a man that believe with God, all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was a Dowser's level of faith, beyond mass uh, explanation. He had faith. Spiritual a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high, and the law in society. A man who rubs shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. Uh, it, it's a blessing. And it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyedepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's chief, Igbenidion had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told, in the preach, he said, this is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to Church of God Mission Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached 
It was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, moving on from one project to another. And often when he started a new project, we whites, we Oibos would say, why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then sometime later we would realize, oh yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that were the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God. On getting there, I met with the Archbishop, my first time of meeting the Archbishop in Dahosa of Church of God Mission International. What an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Unicha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the uh, advanced team, to go and paste posters all over Odicha. And we went to put posters all over Odicha. And the first day of the crusade, a truckload of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform. And, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin. Uh, my class, Actually, I went there in 79. My class started in 1980. And uh, we went through the Bible training, and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. He started Benson Eder Hose University, all those. And well, he's, he's a man we can't, we can't forget. He was a great example to us. And I thank God. It's particularly good for us, whites, British, because in Britain, uh, people are rather skeptical these days. You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis we went to Baltimore flew to New York and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, 
It was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain, because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are and it's raining cats and dogs, what do you want us to do? And when I looked through the wood, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane would lose, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Abishoy Dausa. We say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft. He lifted his hand. I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said. God, you called me and you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back off. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down five minutes time. The pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we were under, we have lost our way. We would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos. It was still raining. That is where the testimony is. Mama, I was there. You can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid. Can we get a bus so we go to Benin? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? <laughs> I was scared. I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold-plated aircraft. Chief Ibnidion, he called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar, and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here. There won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned. His name, Chief Ebohon, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one-on-one, -on -one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are you know uh, he never celebrated mediocrity he never took no for an answer he dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go he was a man that believed in venturing where others fear to venture he was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today. It also started it in 1974-75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that 
um, that sign wonder anointing and his boldness i was i did a meeting for dr morris serilo in 2010 and just before i spoke in his world conference they said uh, oh miracles don't happen in america because they have a lot of doctors it happens in the third world well when i took the microphone i just shared my testimony 23 cripples gave me their sticks and began to walk um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits, and I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take up the spirit that is upon you, and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. It, I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland. And when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop in Dahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives. Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street, and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And one of these days, he was riding past, and people were crying in my house. <laughs> and he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, with it through the crowd. And he came and I said, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. <laughs> He say, ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. <laughs> Till this time, it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, hey, please, I beg you. Don't, don't make a mockery of your God. He said, no, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that, uh, uh, Behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpents, to tread upon scorpions, and to raise the dead. And I said, listen, don't make a mockery of yourself. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal that thing. Raise the dead! 
I said what? I beg what till I come? Again? Again, again? Hey! Benson. You mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Uh, no. Why? But you say I can do it. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Hey. He said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was, she, she was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, listen, this baby died at about nine. And it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The fa why, why, he, why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate. And he said, oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it. I said, how? How are you going to do it? And he said, okay, go out if you don't want to see, see me do it. But uh, you know, as a stubborn child, then I stood at the, I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Child, be healed. After he prayed, he asked me, what is the name of the child? What's the girl's name? I said it's in Warata. I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world knows about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I die. When I died, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, about three hours later, my father come, my late Benson in the house. I said, what is happening? They told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the, in the ordinary native daughter, tried they can raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said, she swam in there. He said, he asked my father the question. He said, Daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him come back to life? My father said, yes. So he said, they should take him to the room. Then take him to where they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray with God that answered by fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That is how I'm a living soul today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, In water, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in water, I command you, rise up. I was just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about 9 o'clock sneezed. <laughs> Another day died to me after a year and three months in the womb. So my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Many said, maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. 
And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Do you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand, I couldn't wait, and I ran out. <laughs> with him to the mother. He said, please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, what is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power. Superpower. Then I wasn't a child of God. My mother used to serve, um, she was a princess of Olokun, Shango, and all that. And I said, oh, the, the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power. So the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer. But I just knelt down and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like us. That young man that we call pastor believed, and he did this. And you know, when I finished prayer, there was an abundant joy, unspeakable joy in my spirit. And the following day, uh, we, we used to call him Brother Benson. He came and said, where is the child? He said, the child is there. And I called him to the room and I said, you know what I did last night? I did know. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, let me have a part of that power. He said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, he prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer, and that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father, Benson Dalsa, is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there was, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today and my life. I have about eight children, two guests, and two boys and six guests. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about 10 grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com
Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I'd like you to know that he was also my spiritual father please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people let this video go viral remain blessed hello this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa his early Christian ministry testimony as a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. 
and flying around on my bicycle in those days i went through the city of benin in nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life after five hours of hard searching i found a compound where a little girl had died a few hours before the corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial i walked boldly to the father of the child the god whom i serve can bring your baby back to life i told him will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life the man was startled but he agreed i walked into the room and up to the bed the child was cold and dead with strong faith in the lord i called on the lord to restore the child back to life i turned to the corpse and called it by name arise in the name of the lord jesus christ oh glory to god the corpse sneezed heavily alas the child had come back to life god is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938, to a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on a farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. He later took correspondence course from Britain and United States while working in Bata Shoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Akos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, young, Bens young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akos' small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a night vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following, said the voice from heaven. The room was filled with the presence of God as Benson fell to his knees before the Lord. Wherever you want me to go, I will go. He prayed through the night renewing his vows to God and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation. After his call, Benson launched into ministry, work preaching from village to village. The gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing, more people confess Christ as their savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself, and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with its headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria, established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastored churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he also he, he was also president of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, president of Idaosa World Outreach, and president of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of Bishop of, Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robot. Uh, university in Oklahoma. It also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971. A doctorate of divinity in 1981 from the World Faith College, New Orleans, and 
a Doctor of Law degree from Ora Robot University in March 1984. He also received another degree. He also received other degrees from the International University in Brussels, Belgium. Archbishop Benson and his wife Margaret Idaosa were blessed with four children. Idaosa Supreme Tax. So winning was Idaosa primary consign with a motto Evangelism Our Supreme Tax. He walked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa, and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries all 123 countries all over the world. Crusade played a major role in his ministry. He was involved at least one crusade per month. A record crowd of nearly one million people a night attended his Lagos crusade in April 1985. He established the Redemption Television Ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people. What leading gospel minister said about Archbishop Idaosa? According to Mrs. Gordon Frada, Lisser, President of Christ for the Nation Incorporated, Dallas, Texas, USA. I know of no young black in all Africa who is preaching, who is reaching million as Benson is in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in, in, in his weekly nationwide telecast, in his Bible school, training eager students from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, where he often appeared on national religious telecast. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrate he is especially core of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from, his, from this mighty leader of God's people said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters sit over 10,000 in 1981, his Bible school attract upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminar have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to Africans as well as to Americans. He believed that Africa has a part in God's work and Africa will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their des have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christian in their own land. 
Ida also rose from the rank of an ordinary man to world leaders, leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher, uh, an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion, whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. He also, also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people, both in the gospel ministry and other fate of human endeavors. And he applied the principles he learned, he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry. He was very energetic, hardworking. One of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Daosa. He was committed and consistent, and he had confidence in himself he was very humble and full of godly wisdom had bishop bensi idaosa was said to be the leader of over seven million jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the lord in february 1998 now i'm going to talk about his early ministry again as a youth, he got converted to Christianity by a certain pastor at Paul and joined his, the flagging congregation as one of the first members. He was very active and converted many to Christianity. After experiencing a revelation from God, calling him into ministry, he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establish, establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable quotes, including, My God is not a poor God. Your attitude determines your, your attitude determines your attitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ryan Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, World of Faith, Group of School, Bensi Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of a son, Reverend E.F.B. Uh, Idaosa. His wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used 
to affect the nation of the world. And I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord. I am honored to be a part of his anointing, a part of his, of his ministry. I want to ask you, please make sure you share these videos, this video, this particular video, to bless all the people. And make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube, and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contact, get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again, I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house. The Lord bless you.